Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window and what a gorgeous shot from our cross camera. And look at the quality of this shot from our SkyFi Tower camera. Beautiful, beautiful late summer day all across north central Washington today. We did see some showers rumble through parts of our area today, but really didn't amount to a whole lot. And we still could see some scattered showers into tonight. But let's take a look at what we can expect the rest of our week and basically into the upcoming weekend as well. We've already seen improved air quality. And this, by the way, is our happy weather briefing points. Uh, cooler and showery weather this week. We talked about that last night, this being kind of a fall-like week as far as weather goes. And we will see good conditions for containing some some of our area fires with higher humidities, not much wind, although we did see some today and uh, some rain showers in our forecast. And we'll talk about all of that coming up a little bit later on in your weather forecast. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. A GoFundMe page has been set up to assist the Kennewick man who was badly injured last week when his truck crashed on McNeil Canyon Road and the lone survivor of the deadly Twisp River fire in 2015 talks about how his boots and proper gear saved him from dying that day. But first we begin tonight. Nearly 400 people gathered in Kashmir today at the site of the 9-11 Spirit of America Memorial. NCW Life's Eric Granstrom was there and filed this report. America was forever changed. In fact, the world was forever changed 17 years ago on that fateful Monday morning, on a day very much like the one we have here in North Central Washington today. The crystal blue skies were darkened forever by the attack of 9-11. Kashmir is the location for the 9-11 Memorial, and especially on this day, where 11 o'clock this morning, folks from all throughout North Central Washington gathered to remember on what happened on that fateful day 17 years ago, but also what happened after that day 17 years ago. That was the focus of Rufus Woods, formerly of the Wenatchee World, as he talked about how the communities and communities still come together across the country when tragedy strikes. Well, what I see every day in our communities reflects a strong commitment to service and to sacrifice. We see this most profoundly with our first responders and the military veterans who have served this country. But we also see the sense of community growing in our Wenatchee Valley and in North Central Washington. For Senator Brad Hawkins, 9-11 was a very memorable day because he was boarding an airplane at Pangborn Memorial Airport on that fateful morning. That uh, a second plane had crashed into uh, the second Twin Tower. And I say crashed, but really as we know now, it, it was an attack. And uh, it really, the whole plane was really taken aback by that. And it, the pilot followed the announcement by stating that the FAA had suspended air travel all across the United States and we wouldn't be taking that Horizon flight to Seattle, that we would be deboarding the plane. The 9-11 Memorial Committee Chairman Tom Green talked about the next phase of what will happen here at this memorial in Kashmir. But they have loaned us a stone from the field of Flight 93 where the aircraft went down. We received the stone about a month ago in a box, and I asked the board, I said, what do you would do? And they said, keep it in the box for an appropriate time. I thought, well, this would be a cool place to open the box. And they said, no, we have not built phase two yet. So you know, phase two is, uh, is coming up. So it's exciting. We will end up having something from each of the major sites of 9-11 when we get done and hopefully dedicate uh, that next year. So let it be said that the folks here in Kashmir and in North Central Washington and throughout the nation and the world will never forget what happened on 9-11 17 years ago. Reporting in Kashmir, I'm Eric Granstrom for the NCW Life Channel. And if you couldn't make it to that ceremony in Kashmir today, you're in luck. We will run the memorial ceremony in its entirety tonight at 11 o'clock right here on the NCW Life Channel. 
A GoFundMe page has been set up to assist the Kennewick man who was badly injured last week when his truck crashed on McNeil Canyon Road. Dwayne Filth was trapped in the wreckage of his truck for over three hours while a team of 26 first responders extricated him from the cab. Philp was carrying a load of fruit when the crash happened. He was admitted from, or airlifted rather, from McNeil Canyon to Central Washington Hospital with critical injuries. Philp was the family's sole income provider and they're now facing huge medical bills. The Philp family has three children and an 18-year-old who was about to leave for college. All proceeds raised through, raised through the GoFundMe page will help the Philp family pay for medical bills and living expenses. Daniel Lyons, survivor of the 2015 Twisp River Fire, has fully recovered from the burns suffered when he and three of his crew members were trapped in a firestorm. He was the lone survivor of that tragic accident. In this Facebook post, Daniel shows the boots he wore that day and shares how effective they were in protecting his feet from being severely burned. Daniel said in his post, quote, For those of you who are firefighters, take my advice and always wear proper gear. One day it might just save you. These boots were the difference between my feet being burned off or not being burned at all, unquote. Those who were killed were Richard Wheeler, Andrew Zajac, and Tom Bisuski. All four were riding in a fire engine that crashed after they were uh, blinded by smoke when the fire exploded due to a wind shift. Well, coming up next, a major bridge replacement project is prepared to start soon in Kashmir. Beginning yesterday, a coalition of state and federal agencies with support from local tribes will begin translocating mountain goats from Olympic National Park to the North Cascades Mountains. A heads up for you folks in the Pashasin and Chelan areas, two road projects to tell you about that will completely close two streets in your towns. And the Wenatchee School Board is slated to discuss the search for a new superintendent when it meets in regular session tonight. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. With 15,000 square feet to explore, you'll find something special at the Antique Mall at Kashmir. For the do-it-yourselfers and those with a keen eye for making something old, fresh and new again, the Antique Mall at Kashmir is the place to come find your next project. From the coin enthusiast to avid collectors, Antique Mall at Kashmir has treasures in every corner. Come find your treasure today. Antique Mall at Kashmir's friendly staff is here to help. Stop on by today. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest Craft Beers and 30 Chelan Valley Wines and Ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. I have a doctor who knows what they're talking about. It's just so much more hands-on and friendly than anywhere else I've ever been. It's really great to walk into somewhere where you feel welcomed, you feel accepted. We've just been grateful for the care and respect that we've been given there. And here when I come to visit my doctor, I'm not afraid to ask questions. It's not just about getting you in and out. I love my care, it's CBCH, it's awesome. Give it a try. <laughs> Welcome back. In another news, a major bridge replacement project is prepared to start soon in Kashmir. The West Kashmir Bridge is being replaced with a newly designed span over the Wenatchee River. The old bridge was deemed by the State Department of Transportation as structurally deficient. You can learn more about the project next Tuesday at the Kashmir Riverside Center. The project consultant and officials with Chelan County Public Works will be on hand to answer any questions. Well, beginning yesterday, a coalition of state and federal agencies with support from local tribes will begin translocating mountain goats from Olympic National Park to the Northern Cascade Mountains to meet wildlife management goals in both those areas. 
This effort to translocate mountain goats from the Olympic Peninsula is a partnership between the National Park Service, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the U.S. Forest Service to reestablish and assist in connecting depleted population of mountain goats in the Washington Cascades. This month's two-week effort to move mountain goats to native habitat in the Northern Cascades is the first translocation operation since the release of the final mountain goat management plan. Two additional two-week periods are planned for next year. Mountain goats were first introduced to the Olympics back in the 1920s. Fish and Wildlife plans to release the mountain goats at five selected sites in the Cascades this month, including Tower Peak in the Medhow area of the Wenatchee Okanagan National Forest. Well, a heads up for you folks in the Peshastan and Chelan areas. Two road projects to tell you about that will completely close two streets. School Street in Peshastan closed yesterday for road improvements related to the renovation and expansion project at Peshastan Dryden Elementary School. The roadway will be closed from Main Street to Jeffries Street. The roadway is open to local traffic only. That street closure will continue until October 31st. And beginning today, Wilmorth Drive is also closed. That's in Chelan. The closure is expected to last up to three weeks for a City of Chelan waterline expansion project. The roadway is open to local traffic only. Motorists are advised to avoid the work zone so crews can work safely. Well, the Wenatchee School Board is slated to discuss the search for a new superintendent when it meets in regular session tonight. The board will review and discuss proposals from several search consulting firms. A motion is expected to be made tonight to select the finalists to be interviewed on September 17th. Brian Flonis announced earlier this year that he plans to retire at the end of the 2019 school year. Tonight's meeting starts at 6 p.m. at the district's headquarters. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, your sports update with Eric Granstrom and our feature story tonight. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Eastern Washington. It's a great place to call home and a great time to own a home. It's the ideal place to lay down roots for your family and your future. Giza Credit Union thinks Eastern Washington is a great place to own a home, too. That's why we offer all kinds of home loans with personal attention every step of the way. We're your home. For home loans, we're Giza Credit Union. The physical therapists at Cascade Medical love the outdoors as much as you do. But sometimes where there's love, there's also pain. Let us help you get back to the activities that you love. Cascade Medical, partners in your health. Choose the pros, Alignment Pros. When your vehicle needs brakes, shocks, struts, or alignment, choose the experts in their field. Alignment Pros and Express Lube with a five-star rating. The work they perform on your vehicle is as impeccable as their shop. With state-of-the-art equipment, Alignment Pros can handle all large or small vehicles. Specialty cars lifted or lowered, Alignment Pros does them all. Keep your car in top shape at Alignment Pros and Express Lube in East Wenatchee. It's a sports update on the NCW Live channel. And a happy Tuesday. Dan, by the way, thanks for filling in yesterday. Coming up on the prep schedule for today, first of all, in girls' soccer, Manson traveling to Lake Roosevelt. Casimir is hosting Efreda. Cascade, meanwhile, is hosting Sela. Eastmont on the road in Yakima to take on West Valley tonight at 7 o'clock. And on the NCW Live channel live tonight, pregame at 6.50. Wenatchee hosts Sunnyside to leave off to a field of the Apple Bowl. Sebastian Moraga and Matt Wisen will have your play-by-play. -play. First soccer match of the season. We were supposed to have one last Thursday, but it got smoked out. Be sure to watch it live tonight here on the NCW Life Channel. On the volleyball courts tonight, Brewster plays at Chelan. Pateras is hosting Manson. Bridgeport heads for the Plateau to take on Waterville Mansfield. And Cashmere is on its home court tonight taking on Kittitas. All those matches start 
at 6.30. There's one early cross-country meet today, actually it was earlier today, Bridgeport hosting Manson, Omak, and Okanagan. Hopefully the smoke up there not too bad as we see a little bit of smoke here in north central Washington again. So again, here's what we have on tap this week for the NCW Life Channel schedule. It begins tonight, live soccer, when actually hosting Sunnyside. Then on Thursday, more live soccer, Eastmont plays host to uh, Eisenhower, that'll be at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. Then on Friday, Hall of Fame night for Eastmont as they'll take on Ellensburg and non-league football at 7. I'll be alongside Mickey White with your play-by-play. -play. We'll feature the class of 2018 Hall of Fame induction ceremony coming up at halftime. That's this Friday night. We'll step back in time over the weekend as we'll feature some games from last fall here on the NCW Light Channel. First, it's Davis and Wenatchee Volleyball at 2 o'clock Saturday, followed by Eisenhower and Eastmont Football at 7. Then on Sunday, West Valley and Eastmont Soccer at 2 o'clock and Wenatchee and Moses Lake Football rounding out the weekend schedule that starts 7 o'clock on Sunday night. Well, the Mariners have had their postseason hopes all but dashed with Oakland's hot play and Seattle's less than stellar play as Seattle uh, has uh, slid into a tie with Tampa Bay seven and a half games behind the A's for the final wildcard spot in the American League. So all the Mariners can do is focus on who's in front of them and that would be the San Diego Padres tonight for the first two games at Safeco Field. Brian Mitchell will take the ball for San Diego while Marco Gonzalez makes his return from the disabled list with a neck strain. Gonzalez trying to right his own ship after going 0-4 in August with a 10.35 ERA for the month before going on the DL. First pitch tonight coming up at 7:10. There are a couple of games in the American League West from last night as we turn to the Les Schwab scoreboard. Justin Verlander turned in a vintage performance against his former team and Detroit striking out 10 over 7 innings as the Astros edge the Tigers 3-2. Houston's lead in the West remains three games over Oakland. Meanwhile, Mike Miner allowed one run in six innings, and Joey Gallo went two for three and drove in three to help the Rangers beat the Angels by a final of five to two. And add injury to insult for Seahawks fans with news that Doug Baldwin's knee injury is worse than thought. Ouch. According to ESPN's Adam Schefter, Baldwin suffered a grade two partial tear of his MCL in his right knee in Sunday's loss at Denver. According to experts, that's a recovery that would take up to four weeks. Baldwin has missed only two games his entire eight-year Seahawks career and has played 89 consecutive games. That's the fourth longest active streak for any receiver in the NFL. Looks like the streak will come to an end Monday at Chicago against the Bears. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom as we keep a sports vein here and head to our feature of the day. Various sports underway in North Central Washington, of course, in tonight's feature story. We bring you a promotional video from Wodeche Valley College on how the men and women of the athletic program practice, push, and succeed. Life is a series of choices. Do you hit snooze or the gym? Do you stay out? or stay late. I didn't get here by accident. I got here with commitment, sweat, sacrifice, and some tears. I'm here because I do what others won't. I work, I push. My future will not be handed to me. It will be earned. The path to my success is mine to create and I will pave it with vision and ambition. I am prepared to do what is necessary to achieve on the court, on the field, on the mound, on the pitch, and in the classroom. I will get help along the way, coaches, teammates, professors, who will recognize the look of confidence, of dedication. I will surround myself with others like me who will push me to strive, to be and achieve more. This will be my team.
won't be easy. There will be choices. But I will stare down and answer life's choices as I always have, with laser focus and unwavering commitment. And this is how my future is earned. Well, there you go. Great programs there at Wenatchee Valley College. You have uh, men's and women's soccer, uh, volleyball on the women's side, men's and women's basketball. And in the spring, you've got baseball and softball. Go to wbc.edu for more information. If you want to follow what's happening with their sports teams, go to nwac.org and follow along there. We'll come back with a recap of your top stories, and Grant will have your complete weather forecast. That's coming up next on the NCW Life Evening News. It's a free walk-in job search assistance center. It is designed to help job seekers with the tools that they need to find a job. We have partnered with libraries in five other cities providing the same types of services that we offer here, just there. Just walk in, we have laptops, and uh, we can help you with resume, cover letter. All of our services are paid for by the revenues earned in our store. Goodwill is just a tool that the community is using to help their neighbors find a job. Goodwill, there's more behind the store. So Pam, how's your mom doing? She's okay. She's struggling. She'd like to stay in her house and it's getting harder for her to do the daily chores. What kinds of problems is she having? Just basic house cleaning, you know, uh, taking care of her house, yard work, taking care of her medicine. Mm -hmm. It does sound exhausting. It is very exhausting and I always worry about her. Aging and adult care can assist you or your loved one to remain comfortably and safely in their own home. Contact them today to start the conversation. Tacos Chava has something new. Customers at Tacos Chava say it's the best Mexican food around. Nachos, enchiladas, tortas, ensaladas, and introducing camarones in many styles. You'll love the fresh salsa bar with so much selection. Are you ready for Tacos Chava? Find them at two great locations, the Wenatchee Valley Mall and any at Tacos Chava, tan delicioso. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. A major, a major bridge replacement project is prepared to start soon in Kashmir. The West Kashmir Bridge is being replaced with a newly designed span over the Wenatchee River. The old bridge was deemed by the State Department of Transportation as structurally deficient. You can learn more about the project next Tuesday, September 18th at the Kashmir Riverside Center. The project consultant and officials with Chelan County Public Works will be on hand to answer any questions. Well, a heads up for you folks in the Peshastan and Chelan areas. Two road projects to tell you about that will completely close two streets. School Street in Peshastan closed yesterday for road improvements related to the renovation and expansion project at Peshastan Dryden Elementary School. The roadway will be closed from Main Street to Jeffrey Street. The road is open to local traffic only. That street closure will continue until October 31st. Beginning today, Wilmore Drive in Chelan is also closed. The closure is expected to last up to three weeks for a City of Chelan waterline expansion project. The roadway is open to local traffic only. Motorists are advised to avoid that work zone so crews can work safely. And time now for a check of your north central Washington weather forecast. And let's take another beautiful look outside our weather window this afternoon. And what a day today with beautiful skies out there and crystal clear picture from our SkyFi tower camera up at the cross count camera at Wenatchee Heights at the cross, I should say, looking down at the Wenatchee River. Here's how things shaped up for today. We did see a high temperature so far today of 71 degrees. Low temperature this morning was 59. Normally we're at 79 and 54, so slightly below normal today. Record high was a hot one, 94 back in 1973. Our record cold overnight low was back in 1983 at 44 degrees. 4.4 inches of precipitation so far this year. Sunrise this morning was at 638 and will set tonight at 790. 
19. As we take a look at our surface loop and tell you what's going to happen over the next five days beginning to uh, tonight, we did see some showers as I mentioned this afternoon. There will be some lingering showers tonight, but they should end a little bit later on some, for some of you folks that are experiencing that right now. As we move into Wednesday, we'll see cool temperatures, a 20% chance of showers, maybe even a thunderstorm on Wednesday. So keep your eye on the sky for any lightning. Hopefully we don't see that. Things will stay about the same except clear out for Thursday. Mostly sunny skies, light west winds 5 to 10 miles an hour on Thursday. Friday, more of the same, partly cloudy skies, but by late in the day and into Friday night, we will see a 20% chance of showers. Uh, temperatures will remain on the cool side for Saturday, partly cloudy and cool. We could also see maybe a stray isolated shower or two on Saturday before things begin to clear out on Sunday even more. And Sunday looks great. Mostly sunny skies. Most of the shower activity will be off to our east and temperatures will climb to about normal for this time of year on Sunday into the mid 70s. Let's take a look at your quick lube and tune forecast now and tonight not too bad. We'll drop down to 51 degrees for our overnight low. Keep in mind we could see a still a stray shower overnight. 30% chance of rain, maybe 20% now on Wednesday and uh, 71 degrees for your high temperature tomorrow. For Thursday, 70 degrees, a west breeze and maybe a chance for more shower activity on Friday and 69. Go back to Wednesday and Thursday for a second though and look at those overnight lows. It's the first time that we'll drop down into the 40s in a long, long time. 48 and 49 degrees. Now let's jump back to the beautiful weather on Saturday. Partly cloudy and cool and 70 degrees. Up to 74 on Sunday as we end our weekend and a beautiful start to our next work week on Monday with sunny skies and highs then around 76 degrees. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with host Dan Kuntz and news with Steve Hare. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. This is TV. This is TV Set Free. TV Everywhere from Localtel sets you free to watch what you want, where you want. Catch your favorite networks, including live TV, ready to watch on any web connected device for no extra charge. That's TV Set Free. Enjoy the extra value Localtel delivers with TV Everywhere. Visit localtel.net and sign up today. Hey there, Wenatchee. I'm Sean Lee, and I'm inviting you to check out the NCW Movie Guide to keep up on what movies are playing in our town. Looking for a hands-on, high-demand job? Now is the perfect time to get trained for a career in manufacturing. Washington currently has a shortage of skilled tradespeople, and retirements are making room for more. The machining program at Wenatchee Valley College is designed to give students the foundation to excel in this precision industry. Don't wait, there are only 15 spots left. A two-year degree and a one-year certificate are available. Learn more at wvc.edu slash machining. Lakeshland Mailboxes is a small place with a lot to offer. Job one is shipping and receiving from A to Z. They pack it, they label it, they ship it. But did you know we also offer notary service, online computer access, legal forms, copies, greeting cards, and of course, mailboxes. Lakeshland Mailboxes, everything you need in one small package.